Hey up lads and lasses, Dan Fire here and today we are looking at sort of a tutorial series that I'm going to do uh, for Infinite Lagrange. This is mostly for absolutely new players, there might be some nice little tips and tricks the vets can pick up, but for the most part this will be for the new players. I keep getting a lot of questions such as how do you get ships, how do you get modules for battle cruisers? and that sort of thing. The tutorial in the game is pretty tragic to say the least. So I'm gonna do this series, it's gonna have its own, um, well, everything really. Uh, so yeah, it's just gonna be a group of videos uh, that you can go watch through and hopefully you'll uh, know how to play the game uh, by the end of it. Um, so yeah, I should hope hopefully help out some new players. I'm gonna add some little tips and tricks into each one as well. Uh, so some of the vets may pick up some nice little tips and tricks uh, that will help them out. Other than that, hope you enjoy this video. And yeah, let's jump into it. So we are jumping into the research today. And blueprints, I'm going to talk about uh, ship blueprints, how you acquire ships, and yeah. So let's jump straight into it. In research, you can see here you have this nice screen, it's all animated and stuff like that. And there are three buttons. You have the Dawn Funding Scheme and the Dawn Financial Plan. In the Dawn Financial Plan, it is very, very, very good. Uh, for the uh, thousand uh, proxima, proxima uh, cost one, this will give you uh, 2,600 uh, income. I actually think it gave more than that, I thought it was 3,000. Um, but yeah, I highly recommend at the start of the game when you've just joined to save up 1,000 proxima, pick up the Dawn Financial Plan, it'll give you loads of uh, currency every day, as you can see, you get 100, and every 10th day you get 150, and it's definitely worth grabbing. There is also the Dawn Funding Scheme. This costs uh, $7, I believe, uh, or $8. I highly recommend grabbing this as well, uh, as you just get a lot of rewards each season. These are seasonal, so every server you can uh, pick this up. And this gives you loads of chests and it's based on activeness, so how active you are logging in every day, obtaining 10 activeness for every action point used, and obtaining one activeness for every enemy ship destroyed. Uh, each level you get, you get certain amount of rewards. These include boxes, Proxima, UE coins. So it's definitely worth uh, making sure to come back in here and check. The top line is completely free, so you will always get that. The bottom line is what you get if you pay for the uh, the research agreement. So uh, do check it out. I personally think it's uh, worth it value-wise if you don't mind spending a bit of money on the game. Uh, but that's my personal preference. I know a lot of people are like, no, it's a mobile game, not, not spending anything on it. So. There is that. You then, after your first service, you've finished your first survey, you're now in the hub. When you join your second server, you will get the research agreement. This allows you to specify research paths to narrow down specific ships. You get a 100% chance of a ship here. It costs 25 RP. And you can narrow it down, for an example here, I believe I have a 4.7% chance, 7.7% uh, chance of Marshall Crooks, and I can't remember the rest because I'm not interested. I want that 7.7% chance at the Marshall Crooks personally, but that's what I'm going for. There are better um, ships to pick up if you're new to the game. Uh, Carillion Special, which is actually the C variant, is very good. Uh, actually, almost a requirement at this current uh, meta state. But yeah. So do check out the research agreement. If you're very new to the game, I'd actually recommend ignoring it a little bit. Maybe start doing the research agreement once you get into your third server, because at that point you might find it a bit harder to get specific ships that you want, whereas you're probably better off rolling the dice with the RP boxes. I have done a research agreement uh, video, so I'll link that up top so you can have a look there as well. The only other way of grabbing ships is through the black market boxes. 
uh, there are ship chances in the ship and aircraft BP files and uh, nothing from the generic BP files. I do recommend picking these up though. Uh, oh, they do have ships in here. I thought they, no, never mind. So you can get ships in here. Uh, it's only the standard, yeah, it's only the standard ships. So it's not particularly great. The CV3K is worth trying to go for from these. Either way, they don't cost you anything except 10,000 UE coins each. So I do recommend picking them up. The ship and aircraft BP, these cost your RP research points. These are 100% chance of grabbing ships. They have almost all the ships in there, except I believe uh, some of the newer ships, the Jaeger and stuff like that, aren't in, uh, aren't in this, so which is a bit of a shame. I know the Jaeger is in there. Never mind. You can get everything. Do bear in mind when you start a server and they have got these extra ships, the Jaegers, the Mistrals and that kind of thing, that you can only grab them after a certain period of time has passed. I believe it's 72 hours or something like that. At that point, 72 hours, you can then pick these up to try and grab the newer ships, the uh, CTGs, the Marshall Crooks and stuff like that. These will randomly give you one of these ships. Now, we have done a spreadsheet on this and the probability is actually accurate here. So if you click the I button when in this screen, to get to this screen, you just click on one of the question marks in the top right and to see the rewards. You have a 30% chance at frigates, 25% chance at a destroyer, 12% at cruiser, 5% at battle cruiser, 3% at uh, carrier, 10% at fighter, and 15% at corvettes. So do bear that in mind. Later on, if you've got most of the frigates and destroyers and their variants and cruises, at that point's when I recommend starting to use the research agreement to try and specifically get uh, ships and ship types. Other than that, you have a chance in the uh, black market tech files. Every single day, one of these will be half price, so you'll get 150 RP if you have the research agreements and uh, not the research agreement, the Dawn funding uh, financial plan, you'll be able to pick up a 150 box every single day. So do recommend uh, picking the Dawn financial plan up, getting that 150 box every single day. And yeah, I will pick up uh, one of the triple ones now just to show it off. So we've got some nice uh, stuff going on and we jump into the black market here and we can see I got a Xeno Stinger. So, in the case of the triple one, I can hit auto research, which is very nice, uh, but you can see we got frigate tech points here. Uh, I got a ship blueprint here. If you have a duplicate blueprint, for an example, I already own the Xeno Stinger, you will get the chance to get the variant of the uh, Xeno Stinger, which is the defensive type in this case. And that's how you get, or one of the ways you can pick up variants of ships. Do bear in mind that in the black market boxes and all boxes, you only get a percentage chance of picking up the whole ship. If it's a ship you don't have at all, you will get it 100%. So do bear that in mind. We'll just uh, run through this. So I am currently pumping up my Mer S. Uh, for frigates, I will take the tech points here instead of the research points. And generally going for the tech points if you've got all the variants is quite useful because it allows you to get them up to V2 a little bit quicker. So do uh, bear that in mind. Uh, I am pumping more V to B here because I don't have enough tech points in there. Uh, what was I doing here? Oh, Neb Chaser Pulse. And I got another ship, didn't I? We'll go tech points here as well. What was the ship? <laughs> should have checked that really. All right, great. It's the CV. Like, yeah, I should probably have gone RP there because uh, this is an absolutely useless Corvette, but you know, is what it is. Never know. I might find a use for it one day. Let's jump into blueprints and talk a little bit about the blueprints. We'll start with the utility ships. So as you unlock these, these are given to you. You always have them from the start of the game. They are unlocked via the utility dockyards and stuff like that, that are built via the construction. You start off with small utility ships. Um, my recommendation here for these is to go for the storage and then the UAV mining speed. This is due to the fact that increased storage reduces the time traveling so it overall increases your yield a little bit 
uh, I didn't actually manage to fully upgrade these before switching to um, the mediums, so we'll ignore these for now, but generally you can grab both of them, it's not a problem, uh, that's for the propulsion. Do grab the engineering UAV systems first though. You get your mediums next, and as you can see here, pretty much similar deal. I've well, not really. I've grabbed the UAV mining speed and then the storage here, and that's because I got AC721s out uh, to support them. If you don't want to get AC721s out, go for the four storage uh, first, and then pick up the UAV mining speed module. It will increase your yield ever so slightly. There's not much in it, but it's worth noting. Then you can pick up your warp speeds afterwards. Uh, that's my personal recommendation on upgrading those. For the large utility ships, again, I kind of average these out. So you can see here that we are mining at um, 80,000 per hour, and we have 95,000 storage. So I'm gonna grab a mining upgrade. So this is more or less um, 96,000 mining and a 95,000 storage. I will then get a storage, and then I'll try and balance out picking storage and speed as I go along to balance them out. So they only take you know as little time as possible to move back and forth, and then picking up the uh, propulsion systems as well here. So, ship blueprints, and as you can see, I have a fair few. So, uh, I will just talk about uh, what they sort of mean and what they can do. And I'll talk about uh, the upgrades for them and how you get the variants. So, on this specific screen, you can see two things, uh, well, three things. This first little number here, in this case, it's uh, highlighted as opposed to grayed out that means i have all variants of the ship so in the case of the io there's three variants i have all three in the case of the chimera there's three variants but i only have two so the first number is the amount of variants the second number is the amount of tech points you have within the ship and the third number is the upgrades on the weapons so for this example, and this applies to all these blueprints, I'm gonna jump into the IO and I'll talk about them. We can see again here the main version number. This is the same as what uh, we just spoke about. Down in the bottom left, you have your anti-ship fire. These are all clickable, so you can see uh, what each one does. Anti-ship fire, the total anti-ship firepower of the fleet. This is DPM, damage per minute. We then have the air defense, the total anti-aircraft firepower of the ship. I wouldn't rely on this. They don't seem to work properly in the most cases of ships. We then have the total siege firepower of the ship, and this is the amount of damage it will do to outposts and bases and any other stationary thing, mining platforms, etc. You then have your basic stats here. This is your HP how much hull points until the ship is destroyed. You then have your cruising speed, how fast your ship is when it's not in warp. This is just its basic movement. You then have the warp speed, how fast it is at warping to locations. And you have the armor. The armor is a flat damage reduction against enemy uh, physical damage only. It's odd that they don't actually include um, the energy resistance in this part here, but we can talk about that in a minute. This button up here, these uh, little squares, if you click on there, we have the production info. It gives you the uh, how much it is to make and how long it takes. This does also take into account if you have multiple capital shipyard upgrades, or in this case, cruiser dockyard upgrades, it will tell you the time it will take to uh, build with the uh, bonuses applied from that. We then have combat roles down here, anti-ship capabilities, grade A, uh, anti-aircraft capability, grade C. These are sort of like an in-game ranking of how good they are at certain things. As you can see here, and if we move between uh, the roles change depending on the type. So, up in the uh, top right, I'll do the this bit before going down to the enhance button. We have I. 
Now I will tell you a bit of info, you get a bit of, you know, nice lore about the ship and about the company that creates it. In the case of the IO, it's made by Jupiter Industries. So you get a little bit of lore and a bit of fluff text. Uh, it's quite nice. You then have the I mode, so you can view the ship. And schematic mode, where you can see the internal modules are that you can upgrade. In the middle, you have uh, the modules that you can upgrade. We'll switch to the anti-ship type because this is where I've got most of my points at the moment. We can go into the weapon systems. Uh, you have module adjustment, which allows you to increase the damage of the module. Uh, so if you pump in uh, these tech files, it will let you uh, increase the, the damage pretty much. Uh, so as an example, I can do one that's probably going to succeed. And we have success, increase anti-ship attack from 6% plus 3%, so we're now at 9% uh, damage on that uh, cannon there. It is definitely worth doing this, uh, increases up to 30%, so you can get quite a big damage boost uh, out of it, so definitely check that out. We then come down to modules. Now each module increases and decreases in some cases you also have strategies here uh, the overall effectiveness of the weapon of that uh, system that you've clicked on again just to show that off a little bit better if we go down to the armor system we can see down here we have different uh, values this is also where you can see your energy resistance if you have any and your armor when it's upgraded and hp when it's also upgraded so we can see here you know, hardened plating, increasing my uh, physical resistances, we have energy resistances, and then the ship HP, and I'll just top that up, because I have the tech points for it. Tech points are spent on modules, and uh, yeah, that's about it. So, when you get a ship maxed, and people have been talking about this, and I've been asked this a few times, uh, in the case of, I'll show you one that I do have max, the Xeno Stinger. This is what a Xeno Stinger looks like as base. When you max a Xeno Stinger, it physically changes and looks different. To do that, you need every single module uh, maxed out. You don't need to have the weapons in increased damage, you just need all the modules that you can apply increased. As you can see, to get there on the Xeno Stinger, I needed around 2.04 which is 104 tech points total so uh, v2 is at 100 points v3 at 200 points tech points so there you go that's roughly how that works now in the bottom right we have increase the tech points if you've got tech points that you've removed from a ship via this button up here so you need to use a tech point restoration and it'll remove them. You get 104 tech points for frigates, in this case from removing the 104 that I have. You can apply them uh, using the increased tech points. If you don't have ships of the type as well, it will generically just give you tech points. So say you don't have any cruisers yet, but you have cruisers, uh, a cruiser tech point research, you'll get a generic one that you can apply to ships. Weapon adjustment, again, this shows you the weapons that can be adjusted, and it's the same screen as I showed earlier on the IO. And you have the enhanced systems uh, where you can see a rundown of all the modules that you can enhance. You can click in here to find ones that you haven't done yet, and you can also enhance from here as well. It comes into this screen here. Uh, livery, this is where you can apply liveries if you have them. Uh, you can change the, the look of the ship, like if we apply uh, this, it is on my light cone at the moment, we can see we now got a blue Xeno. This does apply to all variants, uh, which is kind of nice, uh, so yeah. So, that's about it for the blueprints and the ships, including boxes and stuff like that. Something to note as well though, is if you are new to the game, and you don't have many blueprints and stuff with the liaison center you can come over liaise with uh, one of the trading posts like this one here and if we go into view once you're liaising you can trade here and there are ships available here 
early game, with, as in within the first server. Some of these ships will actually do you quite well. Orias missile destroyers are pretty good. Rager torpedo frigates are very good. So bear that in mind as well. You can use these and purchase these and uh, use them. The, you won't get the blueprint for them. Uh, so you can't upgrade them in any way at all. So overall, your blueprints will eventually get to a point where they outclass any of the trade ships that you can acquire. There are other ways of getting ships, uh, the same as that, temporary ships, uh, but they only really apply once you get into uh, data recovery. And uh, I will be talking a bit about that in a, another video. So, I believe that's everything for research and blueprints. Next up, uh, I will talk about fleets, fleet design, and the uh, battle reports as well. And we'll talk a bit about battle reports and that kind of stuff. So I hope you found this useful. Hopefully that answers some questions that I keep getting. Uh, I keep getting the one about how do you get ships and how do you get modules. Something to note that I didn't mention actually. Modules for super caps. That's battle cruisers and upwards, so battle cruisers and carriers at the current moment. Instead of getting variants, you get blueprints. Uh, sorry, you get extra modules. You'll have a button up here when you get a super cap where it says blueprint design. When you click on them, you can see here I've got multiple modules for my ST59, and this allows me to switch out. If they're additional, such as uh, the one here, which is B1, you will have to pay 10 tech points to equip that module to your battle cruiser and um, this is instead of variants so you, they become sort of more customizable as opposed to variants which are like still specific and then specific design the xeno stinger for an example the base xeno stinger really high damage ship fantastic it's probably the best damage per cp in the game then its variant is the defensive variant Loses a lot of its damage, but gains the ability to take out uh, corvettes and aircraft extremely well. So they're kind of specialized, whereas with your ST-59, uh, for an example, as the battle cruiser, your uh, modules uh, you, you get, and you get these from duplicates, again, of the ST-59, uh, you'll get special uh, modules that you can fit onto the ship instead. So that is it. I'm pretty certain I've covered everything, except the blueprint technology. This is just where you store the blueprint tech for upgrading the weapons, uh, increasing the damage output of them. So yeah, they're pretty quick and simple. Ship livery uh, we talked about. So there we go. Hope you've enjoyed the video, found it useful, and hope it you know helps new players out because as I mentioned in the intro, uh, the tutorial is not particularly great for this game. I will do ships and uh, sh fleet design next and some sort of basic concepts. Um, I do want to do quickly a uh, basic concept for any weapons in the game is hit rate first when you're upgrading modules. So if we look at this one, for example, hit rate, then cooldown, then damage mods, and sometimes you'll pick up the strategies. That is your basic rule of thumb. Some ships, you know, they all, you know, play a little bit differently, so you can get away with some different stuff. But for the majority of the time, hit rate, cooldown, damage in that order will help you out, and that'll help you uh, be able to, you know, apply as much damage to the enemy as possible. If you want more in depth on that, check out my uh, hit rate guides uh, that we talk about some of the modules in there and why hit rates probably going to increase your overall damage output as opposed to just your paper damage output. So thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and I'll catch you guys next time.